Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in this episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to talk all about the ways that we can automate Lightroom and basically make it work for us so that we don't have to continuously do all of those repetitive tasks. So the first thing is know the keyboard shortcuts that you use. Seriously, this will save you so much time. For example, I don't know exactly all the keyboard shortcuts that you use, but I always use the keyboard shortcuts G and E. E goes to loop view, G goes back to grid view. One of the nice things is, is that even if I'm over in the develop module, which I can always get to by tapping the D key, it will take me over there and tapping the G key will bring me right back to the library module. Some of you might want to put the focus on your images, so you're going to know the keyboard shortcut shift tab to hide all of the different panels. Or you might know the keyboard shortcut to tap the L key to dim the lights, do it again to do lights out, and then perhaps tap the E key to go ahead and go into loop view. Again, I don't know which keyboard shortcuts you're going to need, but I've included a list. So if you scroll down underneath this movie, there's a PDF that you can download of all the keyboard shortcuts in Lightroom. That way you can look through and find the ones that make the most sense to your workflow. Tip number two know how you're going to import your files and be consistent. Let's go to the import module. Now, there are many ways that you can import your files. I'm going to go to expanded view for a minute. I basically have two different ways. Either I'm importing from a card or I've already copied the images from my card to my hard drive and I'm going to import from a location already on a disk. So I've set up two presets so that it makes it so much easier. I don't really have to think about all of the variables. And when you don't have to think about all the variables, that means that you're going to make fewer mistakes. So let's take a look. When I come down here at the bottom where it says Presets, and I select Add to Catalog in Place, Lightroom changes all the options so that I'm adding the files. All I need to do is navigate and find the files. And then it knows that I want to add a metadata preset and some keywords. If I choose my other preset, the import from card to new photographs, it knows to make a copy of the images. It knows that I also want to add the metadata and the keywords, and it knows that I want to place the images in my new photographs folder. The way that you create the presets is you simply set up all the parameters, and then down at the bottom, you save the current settings as a new preset. So I highly recommend that for number two, you set up all your presets in the import dialog box. Then you don't even need to go to this expanded view if you don't want to. You can leave it in compact view. See here, I can do things like simply change just the keywords or how I organize my files. All right. Number three, set up your viewing options. Let's tap the G key and go back to the grid view. If you go into the view menu, and you come down to view options, you get a lot of different options for your grid view and your loop view. By default, we're not actually looking at the expanded views. By default, you'll be looking at the compact cells. And you just don't see a lot of information in here. Now, don't let this confuse you, the published photos. It just happens to be that I'm looking at a folder here, Client A for Published Services. But we can navigate to any folder. I can go, for example, to my Miami folder, and we can go back to the view options here. So instead of showing the compact cells, go to your expanded cells. And don't show the tint grid cells with label colors. What that does is if your image has a color label, it'll actually tint the whole cell. Turn that off and include the color label instead. Then, because we're looking at the expanded cell area, make sure that you go through all of the different options here and choose the ones that you want. For example, I prefer my expanded cells to show me the file base name separated from the extension. That way it's very easy for me to figure out what type of file it is. I know how large it is, and I also know the pixel dimensions after I've cropped the file. So this is just the information that I find really useful, and it's all held right down here. You can also choose to turn things off, like thumbnail badges, if you don't want to see them. Again, it's all up to you in the grid view. Now, we can also go to the loop view. And if you want to, you can show information here. There are two different 
sets of information, basically Info 1 and Info 2, and you can customize them both uniquely. Then, once you're out of the library view options, tapping the I key for Info will simply cycle you through so that you can see all that information about your files. Tapping the G key goes back to Grid View, where you can see everything with the expanded cells. OK, number four, presets. I just can't tell you how important presets are here in the library module. For example, on Import, you'll notice that I set up a metadata preset. The metadata preset that would add everything to my image, such as my address, my contact information, my URL, my copyright information, all of those things. You can add them on Import, and you can also add additional options here in the metadata area. In addition, there are presets for doing things like batch renaming. So any time you have to do the same thing over and over again, you definitely want to create a preset. Here we can go to Rename Photo. I can select Edit, and I can create my own renaming sequence. I've actually got one here. You can see I put in my name with an underscore, then the year, and you'll notice that I didn't type in the year. It's actually going to pull the year from the EXIF data from the camera, and then add a sequence number. You can create as many of these as you want. You might want to create one for batch renaming your files in Lightroom, and then maybe another one so that when you export your files, you can use a different file naming convention. Like if you're exporting as JPEG files, you might want to put like LR after it to show that those are low res files or 8 bit or something that would help you to know just from looking at the file name the contents of that file. So I strongly recommend that you create all of the different file naming templates that you need. Another way that you can create templates is for filters. Let's go and look at the entire catalog or all of our photos, and you'll notice that I can quickly use these saved presets. So often when I'm working with my entire image catalog at home, I want to do a quick search for all of my textures that are metallic. So now, instead of having to go up here to Keywords and type in Metal Texture, all I need to do is select it from the list. You can see here I've got one for Clouds. I've got another one for Textured Water. And if we scroll up a little higher, I've got kind of a more complicated one. This one has to do with Two Star Infrared. So not only is it looking for the camera that I photographed with, but it's also making sure that it has at least a two star attribute. So if you find yourself looking for files over and over again using the same search criteria, definitely save those as a preset. And of course, you do that just right down here at the bottom. You'll notice I've even got one for Cody, because I like to look at him, double click on him, zoom in, and then give him a little pat on the nose. OK, going back to Grid View. What else can we set presets for? Well, you can set presets for keywords. Let's say you're always keywording kind of the same type of images with the same keywords. Here under Metadata, you can go to your keyword set, and you can edit these sets of nine keywords. Once you've set these up, you can go ahead and save them. And then you'll notice that underneath the keywording area, right down here in the keyword set, those keywords, those nine keywords, will automatically fill in. Of course, you can change back and forth between them by simply selecting them from the list. So any time you can make a preset, I would strongly recommend it. Why do the same thing over and over again when Lightroom will take care of it for you? All right, excellent. The fifth way to automate and make Lightroom work for you would be to create virtual copies and virtual collections. So you can see down here that I have tons of collections, collections and collections of photographs. It makes it really easy for me to find the images that I'm looking for. But most people just kind of make collections like you could make a portfolio collection, maybe the digital illustrations you want to use in a slideshow, or maybe some motion blur images. But they can also serve as workhorses. So look at this collection right up here. This collection is a smart collection, so it's based on filtering criteria. And basically, if we double click on it, it will edit the smart collection, and you can see what I'm looking for is a capture date in the last 90 days that has two stars or greater. So I'm just looking for the best images that I've taken recently. 
Or what about this one? This is another smart collection, and all it's looking for are any files where the copyright status is unknown. If the copyright status is unknown, it means that I've somehow forgotten to add my copyright to the image. Here I've got another one, the, my keyword to do. Here I'm just looking for the keyword area that's empty. So now I know all of these images are missing keywords and I should go in and actually keyword them. So I don't think of smart collections and collections as just places to put files. I also think of them as places that will remind me to do things to images. All right, and if I come over here to, uh, to this collection right here, the other thing I mentioned, because they're kind of grouped together, right, because collections are virtual, right, that's the huge advantage of them, right? I mean, I can have files from all sorts of different folders up here, right? They could be folders, they could be images from 2008, and they could be images from 2009. I don't have to move those images around physically on my hard drive. I can add them to as many collections as I want. So those are virtual collections. Well, likewise, I can have virtual copies. Keyboard shortcut, just command or control apostrophe will make a virtual copy. So I still only have one original on disk, but I've got Lightroom displaying another copy. So if I tap something like the V key for black and white, now I have one thumbnail that represents the color image and one thumbnail that represents the black and white conversion or the black and white set of instructions that have been applied to that. So virtual collections, virtual copies, why not? I mean, you don't want to be duplicating your files all over the place. Just let Lightroom handle that for you. Excellent. We are out of time. I will continue with the next five ways to make Lightroom automate your workflow in the next episode.